Hey everybody, and welcome to a very special episode of That's Audio Files. The night is young, the mood is mellow, and there's music in my ears. Say, is Vic there? More on that later. But first, what the hell's going on? Well, I'll tell you. Um, over this festive period, we've decided to do three special um, episodes looking back on our first almost year. We started this channel on January the 17th, 2023, and have, at the time that this drops, posted 244 reaction videos, of which 44 were suggested by our lovely viewers. So we decided that this is a great time, because we can't be asked to do anything else, to have a look mm. back at what we've done and take uh sort of top three picks of our favorites um starting with the top three viewers requests there'll be another episode tomorrow where it'll be a top three of my picks and then another episode of top three of andy's picks um it's kind of like those recap episodes you get in tv series when they've run out of ideas uh you got it so <laughs> Um, we will also post a playlist of all the top three picks. Um, and the ones we're going to do for the viewers' requests are going to be my top three and Andy's top three. And then for our own episodes, it's going to be the top three songs that I've chosen, that Andy has um, suggested for me. Uh, and then the top three songs which I have foisted upon him. And vice versa. Um so, yeah, it's been a fantastic year, almost. And um, we've heard a lot of amazing and astonishing songs. Um, so uh, what do you think about this year, Andy? Uh, it's been, in a lot of ways, revelatory in the in the world of music, uh, just because I've been, you know, it's, it's always fun to share music with others, but it's also great to have new songs, uh, that I can listen to and, and new bands that I can learn about. And that's kind of the fun of the dynamics that we, that you and I have. And just the, the overall gist of how this channel works, where it's just an open exchange of, so even outside of what makes it to air, like the comments field are riddled with songs that we have either yet to get to, or where people are like, Hey, you don't even have to go check this out on an episode. Just go look for this song on YouTube or try to find the, this artist. And I think it's awesome. I think that was like the main goal that you and I had when we set out was just to create like this book club of music listeners where there's just this open exchange and dialogue about tunes and artists. And I think thanks in part a lot to the people who have come and, and suggested songs and subscribed to the channel, we've been able to do that. Um, so yeah, I think it's been a lot of fun this year. I think it's fun learning about music that either slipped through the cracks of my time here on earth or came uh, before my time uh, and that you guys have, uh, you know, brought to the table. And again, like you said earlier, this vice versa with being able to like, um, you know, show each other stuff and learn a bit ourselves along the way. So it's been a lot of fun. Mm, mm, definitely. I think when we were setting up this channel, we were discussing what to do, you know, following on from our involvement into the music and we kind of had a blank page, but we, we we liked what we were doing already. So we pretty much adapted that. But one of the things was this viewer involvement. Um, and to be honest with you, we never quite knew beforehand how good or bad it was going to be, frankly. <laughs> and um, I honestly, hand on heart, can say that um, there's not a tune which I haven't enjoyed. Um, the standard has been phenomenal. From from my perspective, anyway, um, I really, really some great stuff, and um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and it could have been, but it wasn't. It was, uh. yeah. So exactly. you know. Anyway, let's crack on. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through the top three picks. Um, I'll do my third, then Andy will do his third, and then can you see a pattern emerging here. Then I'll do my second, second, <laughs> and then my top pick, and then his top pick. Everybody clear? Great. And relax. Um, so, firstly, I would just say for my list, there's a few things. I didn't include any of the songs which, which were requested by our viewers, which I already knew. Um, and there were some absolute 
impeaches me than that. Yeah, I've just done a quick list of the ones that I already knew, and they would have easily been on this list um, if I hadn't imposed that rule, which I just made up on the spot. So, I mean, ones come to mind straight away. New for Fast Automatic Daffodils, big. A um, couple of the jam songs, Tales from Riverbank, awesome, and, and Liza Radley. Pixies, Is She Weird? It's not the one I would have picked, but it's still a great song. Mm. <laughs> Simple Minds, um, uh, Premonition, Wedding Present, Brass Neck. Fantastic song. One of the first ones we did, Primal Scream, Accelerator, Steel mm-hmm. Post, uh, Jar Pick Me, more on that later. The Only Ones in the Garden of the Planet, more on that later. Billy Bragg's Levi Stubbs Tears, which is an awesome song, and Massive Attack Protection, which I fiercely protected of as a fantastic song. So, I've also, and I think I'll probably mention this now, so I've got my three. But I have got a few honourable mentions that didn't quite make the list and on another day would have done quite easily. Um, Cannibal Adley Quintet, Styx, um, Radio 4, Calling All Enthusiasts, and The Reign of Kindo, Return to Me, which is probably a surprise pick from Andy, but um, is that jazzy voice I really, really love. But anyway. Uh, it's the guitars at the end that wasn't the fun one, but there you go. Yeah. So my pick number three is Steel Pulse, a blasphemy, Scylla, which was um, recommended by Echo Trip One. Um, and I think we'll hear a little snippet of it right now. Scylla, oh, Scylla, oh. I just say I hope you guys are listening to this in the headphones and you can just hear that really faint brass there as well. It's just lovely touches. chose this because of the the beautiful madness of the musical landscape of this i mean i uh was familiar with steel pulse their first album in particular i was just quite small i love bits and pieces here and there but this really opened my eyes as to the incredible sound that they created and are capable of and um they went up several notches in my estimation from this and this song was so fun and melodic and catchy and enthralling with that weird emptying of the bottle noise and other bits and pieces and percussion that seemed like it had been taken from Steptoe's scrapyard. They were hitting everything. It was just a delight. And so I had to include it in my list. Yeah, it was a it was a great choice. Um it was probably in my top eight or so. Um and also it, it it came at a it came at a really good like both of the the songs that we did by these guys came at a right time where we needed to switch up our genres a little bit I felt um, yeah, yeah. and boom in yeah. came this great great Rastafarian you know just a, uh, it was so so good um, so yeah I, I think it was a great pick it was a great suggestion both you could have gone with either of the tunes by them but I do think that this one it at least in my opinion edged out the other but it was regardless whenever we can find a reason to get reggae on the channel which i think is one of our you and i both like our indie stuff our little, our post-punk you know little indie umbrella stuff but one of our think both of us for outside of that this is one of our favorite subgenres. so it's good to hear this stuff and bring it into the fold and get them some exposure so it was a great choice man excellent excellent so your number three pick Yes, my number three pick. And I should preface my list by also saying that I applied a lot of the same judgment and and you know unwritten rules that John did uh, when it came to deciding which ones uh, would make the cut. And it was a very difficult process as it was for all of these uh, that we're going to endeavor to do videos on. Um, but yeah, uh, my three, and I, I, I should echo, there are tons of songs that were offered up that I was familiar with and I didn't put them on here because it kind of 
takes away from the idea of learning new music and being exposed to new music. So the songs that I was, fam- that I was familiar with didn't make this list for the same reason that they didn't, uh, that the ones John was fam- familiar with didn't make his. So um, my outside looking in, uh, these three choice tunes that didn't quite make the cut, but I still adored, um, Eat, Red Moon, loved that tune. That was offered up by Scott Grundy. Uh, a very recent one that perhaps with time, you know, and there's going to be some when it comes to you that are like this too, that if I'd given more time to go back and listen to them, they would have continued to grow on me and grow on me. And I know that this one will. Um, and I remember the experience of this because it was one where um, the artist formerly known as uh, Admin uh, offered up three songs by this artist. And I had to kind of sift through and I found this one and I instantly liked it and I picked it out for you. And I've gone back and listened to it several times. So this wasn't even one that I listened to. It was one that you went off and listened to. And that was Fractures and Plaster by Super Chunk. Uh, I really, really loved the guitars, especially the second half of that tune. Oh, man, so goddamn good. And then finally, this one was kind of special to me because I was already familiar with the song, but not the artist. And this rent very different rendition of this song that I was familiar with. And this is, um, this comes from Woodsy 434 and the song was uh, Trucker's Atlas uh, by Sun Kill Moon. Uh, And I was very familiar with the Modest Mouse tune, always liked it. This was so fun to like, and it kind of like, I was kicking myself in the ass that this one ended up in your lap and not mine because of my special connection with Modest Mouse. But it was a world of fun to do the research on this and kind of do all the background work and then bring it to you, knowing that you were also familiar with Modest Mouse and to just be hit with this like, and I knew in this particular instance, you weren't familiar with that song, I don't think, but still it's very cool to like, you know, and you and I have talked about it at nauseum when it comes to covers. It's really cool, the reinvention, the tearing apart to rebuild a song that we're familiar with to hear it in a different like light and this is the perfect example of that. So great, great tune. But yes, my number three. Uh, this one comes from uh, Mike Summersmith, and it was The Only Ones, Another Girl, Another Planet. All right, hold on. The drums there. The drums. There's a lot of gassing up of like the guitars in the song, and I get it. But um, those drum fills are just so... Ah, addicting. Space travels in my... uh, okay, we took it back for the drums because I kind of downplayed the hype around the guitars and then that shit happened. So now we're going to have to take that back a little bit, uh, at least so I can catch some of that guitar work again. And hey guys, it's only a three minute song. So, you know, we've got time. We've got patience. <laughs> Another girl is loving you now. Another planet. Wait, wait, wait. What the fuck what was that? Was that were those Tom rolls? They sounded a little muffled. I don't know. I'm telling you, the song is about the guitar and the drums. Is holding you down. Another planet. And it was just fun. It was just such a fun song. It also. Like it was one of the a rare instance where like there had been a comment when it was offered up about how great these like oh Andy's gonna be balled over by these guitars and uh and I remember listening to it and thinking oh these drums are are the main attraction these drum rolls are awesome and these fills everywhere um and then the guitar came like the proper guitar lead came in and I was like oh shit there it is um <laughs> yeah, it made me it made me eat my words a little bit and it even exceeded the expectations despite the guitar being alluded to in the comment that suggested the tune uh but yeah I just loved it it was like pop punky and um just fun and accessible and it did that thing that you and I love in in lyrics where you um you write about something in a veiled manner that could easily easily be interpreted as about one thing, but very much is about a very different thing. Um, and also the mute this idea of like an upbeat song, but a very downtrodden kind of message behind it. And both of those songwriting uh mechanisms I love. We've talked about it a ton. Yeah. This song is like spot on the definition of that. And so it made my list at number three.
Yeah, yeah. It's um this this song has been a staple in um in my diet <laughs> for um a few decades now and it's trotted out various times for advertising campaigns and things like that. It's a re- and it's on you know compilation albums ad nauseum. It's just a great great song. And it's very accessible as well. I uh, just by having a bit of that spirit about it. So yeah, that's a it was a great shout. Um, Mike knows his stuff, as we all know, and uh, yeah, this was a great one. Excellent, right? Number two on my list is a band which I know, and I have a bit of their stuff. But um, I said at the time I should listen to more of this, and I do not know why because I hold the lead singer and main band in huge esteem um and that is elbow and i've got your number which was um suggested by tin ducky um and let's hear a clip now grow a flipping heart i know what you have Is that a guitar and an organ together? I'm not quite sure. It's quite abrasive, and I like it. Um, I'm just going to pull it back. I have no idea when this started, so let's take a guess. Oh, some lyrics there. I'd say about here. <laughs> I know when it works. Yeah, from the opening of this with its jazzy rhythm section, I knew too sweet I was going to enjoy this. Mm. Um, and the mournful, apologetic piano just paired like a really ripe cheese with Guy Garvey's voice. Um, and he, I think we spoke about this, he's a top, top bloke. And his radio show on Six Music is fantastic. Um, killer lyrics, we know that line, keep it in the bottom drawer where you hide the sex tools and you know, grow a flipping heart love. I mean, and then this acidic, abrasive organ develops a song into kind of like a spiteful noir thriller. I mean, oh. the narrative is great. And then there's harmonica solo it was like a gumshoe stepping out from the shadows to be led up by a tawdry sodium street lamp for a bit i mean i was totally caught up in it and i loved it and yeah i was like oh my god why am i not listening to more of this shit this is ridiculous and yeah another great great sort of mental nudge yeah yep 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 uh it's making this list was was interesting right because we were also not wanting to repeat one another and pick the same songs for this so take that with a grain of salt too audience like some of these would have made our olis like our outside looking in and our top threes but it would be a bit repetitive if we had done that so i didn't put this on my list but i can tell you (laughs) that this was a great experience for me because elbow is um is one of those bands from over there that I feel I should I should listen more to and I would probably love, but just haven't gotten around to it. And uh, this was for me the perfect excuse to give uh, more of Elbow stuff a listen because Grounds for Divorce is the only song I know from them. I think it's amazing, uh, and there's really no uh, explanation outside of just laziness or not thinking about it for me to have not learned more about this band. So I'm indebted to the person who offered it up and I look forward to hearing more stuff from Elbow, hopefully even on this channel. Uh, But yeah, it was really rich. 
It had so much mood. And you spoke of acid. There was this, there was a bit of acid in his tongue or his pen when he wrote these lyrics. And I really like that as a bit of a as a bit of a salute myself for for lyrics. I, as you guys probably know out in the audience, it was fun to comb through this uh, this tune as John was reacting to it, and I was doing a little bit of research for it, and it made me uh, fall in love with the song even more. I guess that's that's kind of the interesting part about not being the reactor, the one who has to go on and and be the one who films himself, and to be the person who gets to do the homework, because in doing that you find out more and it, you start to build an appreciation for the song in kind of a different way than when you're the one just thrown in the deep end, like go, go listen to this. Um, so yeah, it was a, uh, it was a great listen by what I believe to be a great band that I'd love to learn more about. So awesome pick John. Yeah, that's a good point, Andy, actually. I mean, sometimes obviously when we're offering up our own songs to each other, you know them. I mean, it'd be bizarre if you didn't. And so you do a bit more research about the band. Sometimes there's a lot of tunes and bands I really like, which I don't know nothing about them. I just yeah. listen to them. And so that's the learning process is cool. But when it's one that's offered up, which neither of us know, and we have it like a list and it's kind of like a, not quite spin the bottle, but coin flip, mm. that's it. Um, <laughs> and, um, and then I'll, I'll go off and research this song that I've never heard either. And, as you say, rightly, you know, sometimes you're pouring over the lyrics and you're almost, you know, virtually rubbing your hands thinking, oh, this is going to be great. Yeah. But I, I hope he likes it and gets it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but you get just as excited as if it's your own song that you're putting forward because, you know, it's like, oh, we're both discovered at the same time. And sometimes it's an absolute delight. Yeah, so I can yeah. see that. Exactly. Okie dokie, you're number two. Oh, my number two. Now, this is funny because when we did this list. This was probably one of the first songs that came to mind when we were doing this. And this was the first, um, the first, probably the first time where I was really like pissed that you got a song that I didn't. Um, and maybe one of the first times where I truly like experienced that whole thing we just discussed where I'm doing the research and I'm like, Oh my God, I cannot wait to see what John says about this. <laughs> um, uh, because like you didn't, you weren't even familiar with these guys. Not, neither of us were. Um, and I heard this song and I knew you were going to react to it. And I, and I had to, when you and I were writing down our top three, I had to beat you to the punch on this one because of how much I love this song. And I'm sorry, because I know you loved it too. Uh, but man, Radio 4, Calling All Enthusiasts, offered up by Kevin M. This song was, as you guys say, an absolute belter. Like, it, it so uh, frenetic. It, it was right in my wheelhouse of when I, like, my love for music was still, like, growing. And, like, there was this kickback to, like, garage indie stuff from a time before my time. That was kind of like this renaissance uh, of that genre. And this had it in spades. It was very quintessential New York sound, too, uh, which, you know, I'm not far from and grew up listening to a lot more of than the stuff that you've offered up to me over from the UK. Uh, and it just hit with me so hard. And all I could do uh, was juggle the emotions of being angry that I didn't get it, but also the absolute delight and anticipation to hear what you had to say about it. Um, let's give that tune a little bit of a listen now. I'm really sorry, but we've got to start resisting. It's no request. We really are insisting on this now. We'll take it out, out, out. So this is so bloody good. <laughs> Uh, starting with that sort of slightly classical sound, which is then looped with a really nice beat. I was half expecting some sort of rapping to come in, but no, it's this funky ass guitar. And I like they do like a line and then it expands at the end of it. Another line, another line expands. This is great. Jangly guitars, fun drums, energy for days. Uh, you can't really, you know, you can't really fuck that up. So uh, this was an awesome track. Still a little jealous you got to be the one to get to listen to it on the channel. But uh, man, I'm better for having heard it. I've listened to it so many times since this. 
Yeah, yeah, there's a couple like that. I mean, one on the list I've already mentioned. Oh, no, see, I, I mentioned this as an honourable mention. And another one as well, which I was a bit pissed off about, but there you go. We both got to enjoy it in the end. Yeah, this is um, this was a great, great song. And it had that really nice... It's quite a rare thing that it's done well. And I think something like um, New Fastles, Mighty Daffodils is an earlier example of this sort of indie where you get a bit of dance into it. I'm not <laughs> going to the extremes of Manchester that really perfected it, but there's a little bit of that funkiness to it. And it's so rare that it actually works. And this was one of those times where it's just bang, nail on the head. Um, super. Yeah. And without further ado, my number one pick is blindingly obvious to me. It is Can and Mother Sky. Oh, yeah. Offered up by Juan Kelly. awesome oh man it was just relentless but changing as well i couldn't stop to talk because something else might happen i know it's 12 and a bit minutes but it just went like that that was brilliant loved it loved every second of it so cam i've been mentioned to me so many times over the years by people saying you got to check them out you got to check them out so, yeah 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 and i never did so it was a huge debt of gratitude to one to give me the impetus to finally do it um i was generally excited beforehand to listen to it and it did not disappoint one iota this and hello gallo which greg gave me on into the music really has opened up the world of crowd work rock to me which i was aware of and heard the terminology but didn't really understand it that until mm -hmm. now and now I've really begun to paddle in those deep, deep waters. Um, this song took me on a trip, like all the best epics do. I was like absorbing inside my own brain. Um, I've snaffled up four of their albums already, and I'm an absolute complete fan. Can and they're fast becoming one of my favorite bands. Um, and this awesome track, Mother the Sky, isn't even my current. Favourite cam track. There's another one which I may give to you at some point in the near mm. future. Mm. And the mm. soundtracks mm. album, which this is from, um, is winging its way, vinyly, to me for Christmas. So that's something to look forward to, isn't it? I can honestly say, without going into all the amazing details of Tama Suzuki and, you know, and the guitars and the drums and all this other shit and the pneumatic drill that was going on and all this stuff, this is one of the highlights of my year. It really was. And it's a really become quite an important track to me yeah this it's <clears throat> I, I like the song a lot i don't think i had the same reaction that you did i don't think it hit yeah. as, as hard with me as it did with you yeah, yeah. i still really really enjoyed listening to this and i remember the fear of this song because i saw the timestamp. And I was like, wait a minute, I've got to listen to this then i got to go do all this homework on it this better be a good song like not for nothing and I thought it was it was incredibly interesting. Like it was really intriguing. I remember getting to the end of it when I was doing my, like you know doing the the research and prep for everything and being like, that wasn't a homework assignment. Why did I have to be such a pessimist about it? This was a really good song. Awesome decisions in like assembly of music and instrumentation. Uh, and they kept a song that was that long quite fresh. And really, really interesting. And I was on the same page as you when it came to like my knowledge and understanding of Krautrock um, and my introduction, not to the concept of it, but to it itself came yes. from listening to Into the Music and, and, and you know, doing stuff on this channel and getting this recommended to us. 
And I'm at the point where because of this song, I'm wholly intrigued to learn more about not only this band, but this genre that has only been a thing that I've kind of heard about in passing, yeah. but never really wrapped my head around what qualifies a song or an artist as being kraut rock. So um, I'm looking forward to continuing to, to learn about kraut rock and the artists therein. And if it wasn't for this recommendation, this song, I probably would have just stayed pretty ignorant to, um, to the genre outside of just knowing that exists. So, this was a really great, great pick uh, by the person who offered it up and a great finalist uh, for this list, too, because this was a really awesome song. Yes. Now on to my number one favorite viewer request song. And I know this is probably your version of Radio 4 calling on DTS as far as the dynamic is concerned of who got it. Uh but yeah, it, this was offered up by our buddy Bob Page, and it is Cannonball Adderley Sticks. There's some pretty stellar upright bass that's happening as well. You have to sift a little bit, but it's there, and it's wonderful. <laughs> was fucking nuts and we're gonna have to revisit it because when something's fucking nuts it warrants being listened to at least a second time uh yeah this this song had <laughs> it all it, it was not only the music but it was the ambiance and the setting and it was one of the few live performances where the audience was nearly as important as yeah. the as the actual musicians themselves um and i say nearly because they didn't have cannonball adderley's brother uh in the audience he was on the stage and he fucking stole the show uh yeah. the whole thing was great but every all the instruments and the flourishes and the like late like the laser gun sounding horn pops that were happening with such rapidity um we're just mesmerizing and it was so beautiful to watch that and or, well, listen to it all unfold. Um, but to hear like in between movements in the song, in between these like portions where the instruments took the baton or the lead role or stepped into the spotlight, you would hear the audience interaction. And it just made me want so badly to be a fly yeah. on the wall or a member of that audience to have like bore witness to this, like, what seemed to me, uh, and maybe like the annals of time and history won't say this, but for me, it sounded like this was in a really incredible, important moment in music, particularly live music. And um, I, I, for for whatever reason, I just found found that incredibly moving to listen to that um, and to know that there are people out there that, that that got to experience it, and it was just wholly special uh, to to be able to to listen to that even myself on this, on this silly little channel. So Bob, it was, uh, it was, the, you know, one of the joys of the last year to, to be able to um, listen to this song, react to it um, with as much truth as pop, because I was given nothing. So everything that I experienced was like unencumbered or uninfluenced uh, by, you know, um, presupposition or, any sort of like spoiler given to me by the by someone in the you know Bob, you, it's not like you went on a diatribe about this tune. I just listened to it. It was just a great, great song, great live performance. We've talked about this of late too, John. Where I think both of you kind of agree on this, where the idea that a really well mixed live performance, whether it's a, a, a video of it or just the audio of it, is some of the best way to experience music because you get the best of both these worlds of production and live performance. Um, and yeah, it was just great, man. Yeah, yeah, I like all of that. I absolutely adore this. I remember we were going through the lists of deciding what next ones to react to and kind of what Adelaide. And I remember saying to you, 
I know that name. I've got a vague feeling it might be Jazz. And you went, okay, well, we'll see. And of course, when we did the reaction of the episode, we realised that he played on a Miles Davis club, <laughs> the most yeah. famous jazz album ever, and his name's there on the cover in big words. <laughs> um, yeah, this is superb. Um, I probably think just slightly different to you on this. I think that for everyone in that audience that night, it really was a special moment in time. But I think those cats on stage did that same fucking thing every night. And for them, yeah, you, prob- you know what? You're probably right. Just another round. You know, yep. it wasn't that special for them. I'm sure they feel it sometimes more than others, but yeah. Yeah, I think I can imagine them doing that two hundred times a year. Right? Yeah, just being like, "Oh, that was another Tuesday for us," you yeah. know. Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, well, that's our top picks for this year of viewers requests. Um, drop some comments. Um, tell us what coming. you think as well. Yeah. And of course, yeah, um, please whack in some more um, requests. We have a list, but you know, it always needs refreshing. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks so much because we've really enjoyed it. And I'll leave Andy to say the last words. Yeah. Thanks so much for giving a listen, guys. Uh, thanks you so much for being a huge part of this channel and contributing to it uh, over the last nearly a year, as John mentioned earlier. Um, it's been an awesome trip. It's so much fun to listen to stuff that's like outside of uh our own box and is something that you guys can offer up to us. And, you know, every day is a school day here at the audio files. And we do love learning. So all that out of the way, we hope to see all y'all and maybe some more on the next installment of The Audio Files. See you later, guys. Have a great holiday.